So let's talk about being perfect because you know if you get perfect, you become this awesome, insane human being. You say all the right things, you stand the right way, you walk the right way, you talk the right way, you have the muscles, the six pack abs. Basically, you become a Chad. You're going to be irresistible to women. You're going to get everything you want, right? Same thing with business. If I become uh, irresistible in business, I'll make all kinds of money, right? Well, we're going to talk about that very thing today. And uh, before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share. I don't want to invite you to comment in the video. I love those comments. I'm always reading them, checking them out. The relationship with you guys is the most important thing and uh, help each other grow. Anyways, let's dive in. Uh, I'm out here in Austin, Austin, Texas still, but I'll be here for a few more weeks. I'm sh shooting all kinds of new content for new social media platforms. So watch out for that. I'm going to have a new YouTube coming out all about success and uh, embodied success. I'm going to have a Instagram, new Instagram coming out probably a TikTok. Uh, I think I'm even going to do a rumble. We got a lot coming, a lot of podcasts I'm filming right now too. And I'm super excited to bring you this content. So working my ass off here and let's dive in. Let's talk about being perfect, right? By the way, check out that view. Woohoo! I'm not saying don't work on yourself. I'm not saying don't become a better person. I'm not saying don't go to the gym and work out. I just got done with my workout. That's why I'm dressed the way I am. I'm in a, got a hole in my shirt and, you know, and uh, I'm out here sweating. Um, but I figured I'd just come out here and be, not clean myself up today and talk to you guys, you know, wear my glasses, not put on my contacts. Um, and say, I don't have, I'm far from perfect, right? We all are. But we have a secret obsession deep down inside most of us. We really honor our secret thoughts that we really want to be perfect. So many people come to me for the dating confidence because they so badly want validation. They want to be cool. They want to be badass. They want to be loved. They want something from this external world out here. All these people, you know, that come by on this track, they want people to think they're the sexiest guy around or one of them. They want people to think they're the coolest guy. And it's a little bit of a mind fuck, right? Because the more you want something, the more it runs from you. And if you look at anybody uh, like myself, I'm far from perfect, right? I, I have terrible vision. Uh, I don't have the huge muscles. I have a little belly that I've never been able to get rid of. Um, I do love to work out now, but uh, uh, I don't have perfectly white teeth and I haven't gone and fixed all these things, you know? Um, and for some reason, I don't know why I'm 5'8", not super tall, probably even a little lower than 5'8". I might be 5'7 and a half, right? I think I, I, I might have that off. I might be cheating just a little bit, right? I, I'm bald. I got a big forehead. Call it an eight head, right? And in my mind, there's nothing wrong with any of that. There used to be. I used to obsess over it. I used to worry about it. I used to bother me. You know, I used to be like, oh, I wish this feature, I wish I had a stronger jawline. I need to fix that. Or I had whiter teeth. Or uh, if I could see perfect. Or if I had, the one, the big one was ripped abs, right? If I had ripped abs and I was uh, this badass with uh, with muscles and ripped abs, um, I would be successful. And here's the funny thing: is that's the very thing that's been keeping that at bay. My ripped abs and muscles is probably that former obsession over it, right? And what I'm doing with this video is I'm saying all of that is a lie. You can get there. You can become. I've seen guys that work really hard to develop muscles and looks, and they become a Chad only to become disillusioned in the end. Because even if they get all the women from being perfect, the women don't love them. They're getting all this validation. They need the validation to be happy. And then the next day, after they bang a new hot chick, they're miserable again. Or maybe it lasts for a couple weeks, then they're miserable again because they've never fixed who they are inside. But here's the funny thing. When you work on yourself inside and you really begin to love life, which I had to do, right? Then your whole life begins to change for the better, regardless of whether you're perfect or not. Just like this tree, right? It's missing a branch here. It's got knots all through it. It's part of its character. It's part of its beauty. And that's what makes it unique and interesting when you can truly own that stuff. So that's what I want to talk about today. I believe the most attractive men long-term, the men that are really powerful in the world, aren't looking for validation from this world out here. All the people on this track, they actually own themselves. They love themselves. 
And I think the most powerful version of men didn't start out that way. They had to learn to love themselves. They know what it is to be humble. They know what it is to be grounded. They know what it is to open their hearts consciously because, because they didn't have it when they were young, you know? And that is literally what makes their life so good. And that's something you can all obtain. You see, I don't have all these things, right? But for some reason, I still have a great life. Life treats me well. I travel the world, I'm in Austin right now, right? I just came from Minnesota hanging out with my dad. I didn't grow up with my dad, he wasn't around. I could spend my life resenting him and hating him for that. Or I can just love him because he's so loving right now, 85 years old and he takes such good care of me now. Uh, I had a, but I did have a sociopathic stepfather. You should be upset about that. Well, I let that go years ago. I had a bipolar, borderline, narcissistic mother, right? Well, I loved her, man. I worked hard to reach the point where I loved her and I could give love to her. I lived in Montana skiing the last three years. I wanted to live by a ski resort and ski and I did that very thing. Next month, I'm going back to Romania to teach two more masterminds, something I love to do with friends. I'm gonna hang out with Amperion. I'm gonna hang out with my friend Hans. I'm gonna meet some new people out there that are amazing. And, and this is, actually I'm gonna be meeting this guy out there that used to be an actual professional gigolo, supposedly, you know, one of those Chad really good looking guys. If you want me to do an interview with him, let me know. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it just to, cause he's had all these realizations in life from spending years in that lifestyle and getting out of it. And I think it'd be an interesting interview. So let me know if you guys want that. And, but I travel the world. I've got friends in all these different places that I go, right? I was just in Canada with all these friends that I met that actually live here in Austin. So I'm out here in Austin and I'm filming new content. And I get to hang out. This is how my work days go, right? Hanging out, seeing stuff like this. Life treats me well, yet I don't have six pack abs. I'm not young anymore yet. I can still date beautiful women. Um, I don't have the perfect body. I've got a good enough bank account. I didn't start out that way though. Not until my, up until my mid thirties, I was broke all the time. Um, I've had uh, gut issues most of my life. <laughs> I don't have, uh, I w like I said before, I wish I had a smaller forehead. I, mean, I could go on for days. Who cares? Look at my glasses. Like if I set them square on my ears, they see how they're crooked all the time. Like I go, oh my God. And you guys have called that out in the videos a few times when they fall down, right? And if you hook them here, See, these are all the things that we as humans, we obsess over, we worry about. But when you start to own it and you open your heart in spite of it, start to laugh at yourself and start to say, this stuff is awesome. This is who I am. This is my, my beauty. Then your whole life begins to really change and people love you because what people actually do is they reflect who you're being. If you love all your flaws, instead of trying to fix all your flaws all the time, um, then what happens is people love you for your flaws because we all have flaws. And when we see somebody that knows how to love themselves in spite of their flaws, we end up loving that person. And then when you're no longer fighting to get the perfect six pack abs, you find it suddenly easy to do or get the muscles. It's suddenly fun to build, right? So now I, I love working out. This is, this is uh, something I worked on recently was getting past worrying about what I thought of my body. And now suddenly, I'm in the gym all the time, moving, feeling. And I, I imagine my body's gonna change over the next few months a lot um, at the rate I'm moving. Um, so I wanna invite you into this idea that you're perfect just the way you are. You're beautiful just the way you are. You're awesome just the way you are. If you, you, and I'm talking about you, can feel that. If you can find that in you, to say, I don't need to change this. Doesn't mean I won't. Don't, doesn't mean I won't do the work. Won't go out and exercise like she's doing. Doesn't mean I won't hustle. It's just, I'm going to do it now from a place of loving this thing and giving it what it needs to be its best versus from a place of needing to fix this thing, right? Needing that it's broken, that I need to do something about it. And when you make that change in life and you really mean it, you got to really mean it in your core. You got to be able to open your heart and digest that idea with your gut and let go of all the anger and resentment you have towards the people in your life. Like I did my mother and my stepfather and my, and, and my family that, from my childhood and, and who, know, who knows who else. Then that's when that really begins to change. Have you ever seen the Japanese bowls that 
then when they when they drop them and they break and then they they they, they put them back together and they they put gold lines wherever they're broken and it actually makes them more beautiful it, it's part of the wearing of the bowl and the aging and the knotting and the twisting and the turning and and the gold lines that go through it i forgot the name for that i, I talked about it in a previous video once but when you when you see it that that's part of what makes it beautiful you know, for years I wanted everything to be perfect all the time. If I got a new piece of furniture, don't, don't sit on it, it might get scratched. If I got a car, oh, I don't wanna get a dent in it. And now it's kind of the opposite, right? I get a leather couch, the wear and tear in the leather couch is part of what makes it beautiful. Uh, my four wheel drive truck especially, you know, I got dents and dings in it now that I put in there myself, but each one's a story. And I've noticed this with clients. When I get a client that's seeking being perfect, and he wants so bad to be perfect, uh, like Eddie or so many of my other clients, and they resolve that, especially in dating, it's kind of wild to watch him change. And I like to use Eddie because because so many of you guys have got a, a story about being short, right? He's five foot two. And he pushed women away when he met them like crazy. But the dude literally did exactly what I'm talking about. He fell in love with himself. He fell in love with who he was being. He, he started owning being five foot two. He started owning being a little chubby and he learned to become very confident in those energies. And he started saying stuff like, oh, I love it when a woman's so tall, I have to stand on a stool to kiss her. And next thing you know, he had women like crazy. Now, he did two things that are really, I'm probably doing another video on this, that are really important. He's really good at making a woman feel safe, because that's one of the uh, number one, that's the number one thing you got to do. You got to make her feel grounded and safe. Like when she's with you, she can completely surrender into your masculine and let her feminine completely blossom. Women love that, right? And uh, because so many women today have to be in their masculine. And, and, and then when you come along and you've got it, oh my God, I can just be a woman. I can just be a girl. I can just be feminine. That's beautiful. You got to make a woman feel safe. You got to have an open heart so you can enjoy them. You're safe. You're enjoying them. And then the last thing is you've got to feel your certainty, your confidence, your turn on, right? Those qualities. When you can embody those qualities, open heart, you feel security, you feel your turn on when you're a woman, she's going to feel amazing regardless if you're perfect or not. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be. And I'm going to say those qualities I just talked about are not qualities you have to go get. They're the best version of you. You all do it in your own unique way. You all have the ability to open your heart naturally. You were born with it as a baby. You all have the ability to be definitive and certain. You did it as a child. That's my toy. I'm doing this. You all have the ability to, and you develop the ability to and this is every, every man on the planet to ground a space. That's what we're designed to do. These are your natural abilities. When you develop those abilities and you don't develop them to impress somebody, you do it for you. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. God. So let's talk about that. We got Eddie, five foot two, right? We got uh, Dave, lived in a van, picked up women like crazy. We got my... Um, I used to say his name all the time, but he, he was fresh on parole, on prison, had no money. He dated like crazy. Um, then there was Jason, right? He also lived in a van. He lived in a van, hadn't paid his taxes in years. And he's probably the best I've ever seen. He also was about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, These guys killed it with women over and over. And there's many more. Really the ones that were the best, the real best, didn't look perfect. If you get a, a woman from looking good and you don't have any other game beyond that, it's not gonna be a fun relationship anyways. It's not gonna last very long, you know? Um, but if you really learn to be what you're designed to be and you start to get your success from being and from letting go of attachment to outcome, from enjoying life, from being the most powerful, best version of you, then uh, everything changes, then you can really create pretty much anything you want. That's why I'm living the life I'm living. <laughs> That's why I don't sit there and obsess over, I gotta go get LASIK, oh my God, I gotta look good. Uh, I gotta uh, do a bunch of jaw exercises. Actually, I'm doing, I'm doing some right now, I'm trying it out, but but I, uh, I gotta go 
um, get a six pack abs. I got to get muscles and I'm working on that right now, but I'm doing it because I'm having fun with it. Not because I have to, when you don't need people to validate you and you can really own that stuff, just put it out there on camera. Let's leave the glasses crooked for a minute. And you really own it with an open heart and groundedness. That's when you're most attractive. So hopefully you're getting this idea and you're starting to understand, oh yeah, there was also Sean Stevenson, right? Remember Sean Stevenson, three feet tall in a wheelchair. He, he was dating like crazy. And uh, I went to a party with him once, right? Three feet tall in a wheelchair and he was being, the women were holding him in, his, in their laps in the jacuzzi and he was teasing and bantering and playing with each one. He was a solid dude and uh, God rest his soul. So I want to encourage you with this video. That's why it's a messy video. It's all over the place. I don't have the perfect lighting. I don't have the perfect, actually I'm throwing all that out anyways. Then um, I want to encourage with you with this video to really take in what I'm saying. Start to look at all your imperfections, all your secret thoughts, all that part of yourself where you attack yourself and you beat yourself up and women will like me when, or I got to fix this. Maybe it's not even women will like me when. It's just, can you hear the, uh, thing? what are those? Are those locusts? I don't even know what they are. But when you start to feel that part of you that, that feels like I need to change something about myself to get something from somebody else, even groundedness, even open heartedness, that's what I want you to acknowledge. Put it in the comments. What is that? And stop it. Because everything you do, you do to grow. You do for you. You do out of self-love. And that's a whole different animal. I work out now. I worked out for a good hour this morning because I loved it for me. I didn't give a hoot who saw me or, or I didn't get, you know, I, I also, another one I got is I think I'm too white sometimes. I'm really white. I got a lot of Scandinavian culture. So when I get out after being skiing all winter, I'm like, ah, oh, everybody's going to see me. You know what? And now I've been like, screw it. Let me go out and be the palest guy in the room and own the shit out of it. Cause that's what makes you attractive. Right. And that also allows life to be a blast. So like I said, I'm out here filming. I'm creating a bunch of new content for you about having living in cap, having a successful life, interviewing people that are doing that, whether they make a lot of money or whatever they're doing with my podcast. We're going to keep this channel going, the Fearless channel. The Fearless channel is going to be for you men. Um, it's going to be an experimental channel where I just talk to you guys for real and I just get honest with you. And then uh, the new channels will be about the new business. So I'll let you know as that starts to happen. And um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I want to tell you guys today? I'm sure there is. I'm sure if I sat here long enough, I could think of things for days. Yeah. So let's just end with go out and be messy. Be imperfect today. Go out and if you're too white, let people see you be too white. If you, if there's something like the glasses thing, who cares, let it go for the day. Just notice what it feels like to be seen and see if you can even accept yourself even 1% more in that area. Just say, can I drop in a little deeper in that area and accept myself a little more? If you do this on a regular basis, inside of months, possibly weeks, you're going to feel very, very different. You know, that's when the self love starts to happen. And when you love yourself and you begin to give it away to others, not because you need their validation, that's when you truly, truly become attractive. With that said, remember only the confident really live. And, um, that's it. See you in the next video.